Here we are on the task tab for a job. Tasks are critical for time tracking. They are how an employee is going to break up their time when working on a specific job. So you can keep your job time tracking very simple or you can make it very detailed. It's up to you. A simple system might be I just care about estimated versus actual hours on the job and I don't really care about how much time an employee spends on each different task. If that's how you want to track your time, you only need really one task on the job. You can call that task whatever you want, but that would be the estimated hours for the entire job. For most people though, that's not quite good enough. For construction projects, you want to maybe break that down by hardscapes, softscapes, and irrigation. Or if you're doing projects related to maintenance, uh, you may want to break your time down by regular weekly maintenance uh, versus cleanups versus extras, for example. Tasks are your vehicle to do that, to break a job down by certain different components. And you can see on my screen here, I've got a job called the Brownson Backyard, and I've broken this job down by three different tasks. I've got garden, patio, and pergola. So when an employee clocks into the Brownson Backyard, their screen is gonna look like this, just narrower because it's on a phone. They're gonna clock into Brownson Backyard, I'm gonna hit next. They're gonna confirm who's in their crew that day, and hit next. And then they're going to pick what task they're working on. And they have the ability to set everybody to work on the back patio, or they could do it employee by employee and set specific employees to specific tasks. Now when the employees are clocked in, I'm actually clocking in time, not just to the job, but to the specific task on the job. The goal is that on any given job, we should be able to click the review and look at estimated versus actual hours on each different task on the job and you'll be able to see this in real time how many hours you estimated versus how many actual hours the crews have used up. So keep your tasks focused on job costing and how you want to break this job down. One very important rule, start as simple as you can. In theory we'd all like a nice really detailed breakdown of the tasks on a job and how much estimated versus actual time we spent so that we can get better at estimating. Reality is to expect your foreman to pull out the phone every five minutes to switch people's tasks to keep up with a very detailed list, it's just not going to happen. What will happen is you'll create a really detailed list of tasks, foreman will forget to switch tasks, your, your list won't be accurate, you're going to end up with way too much time on some tasks and no time on others, and at the end of the day you'll have a really complicated system that's useless, didn't give you any good information. Especially when you're starting LMN time, keep your tasks simple, let your foreman get used to it. If you decide after the fact to get more and more detailed, that's fine. You can introduce that slowly, but don't out of the gate start with a whole detailed list of tasks. Keep it simple. Let everybody get the hang of it. Make it useful. It's far better to have good data that's less than to try to capture a whole bunch of data and have it all be meaningless. On this job, I've broken this job down by three tasks, garden, patio, and pergola. When you create a task, you're asked to give it a name, and this is the name that's going to show up for the crews. And then you're asked to assign it a cost code. Now, cost codes are useful if you're going to sync it with accounting. Cost codes link with service items in QuickBooks, and service items are the crux of job costing in QuickBooks. So for this back garden, I'm going to link it to my QuickBooks service item called 4020 Softscapes. Task notes allow you to enter a, a note for the crew so that whenever they're tracking time against this task, they're going to get prompted with a note before they can even clock in. That's whatever you say. For instance, in this one, if I wanted to say, uh, make sure not to damage the existing mulberry, when I hit OK there, what it's going to do is whenever a crew clocks into this task, softscapes or the back garden on, on the Brownson job, they're going to get hit with this note on their phone that says make sure not to damage things. They won't be able to even start time tracking without reading that note and clicking OK. Tracking hours and rates for billing by the hour allows you to, uh, to actually track time and bill that time by the hour. For any tasks you do that are um, either by the hour or also called time and materials or cost plus, you can tick that on and then it'll prompt the crew to, to track the rate that they should be working against, uh, the name of the rate anyway. And you can actually do jobs billable by the hour this way or element time will help you bill that. More on that when you get to the rates tab in the jobs. Showing activities on clock out will also prompt uh, employees with a list of billable activities if you've set them up for the job. Again, watch the job activities tab video for more information on how to set that up. 
Estimated hours, on the other hand, allows us to enter the estimated hours for a task so that we can compare estimated versus actual. So this is where you'd put in your estimates, or if you're importing a, an estimate from element estimating, that's gonna come in from your directly from your element estimate. What you'll end up with then is a list of task names, what service items they'll get linked to, whether or not you're gonna charge them by the hour, and how many estimated hours for each. You can order your tasks in order of most to least useful, or at least most, uh, most often to least often used for your crews so that it shows up in the right order when clocking in on a timesheet. For instance, on this job here, the back patio has the most estimated hours. I would assume the crews are gonna clock into that most often. So I'm gonna move that up to the top so that when they pick this job, the first task that shows up is gonna be back patio. Uh, pergola has the next most hours, so I'll put that second and I'll leave back garden last. So now when the crews clock in, the, the list of tasks will appear in this order for them on their timesheets. A Couple other functions down at the bottom. You can merge tasks. So for example, if I thought maybe it was too detailed to split the back garden from the back patio and I just wanted to create backyard, I could tick these off, I could hit merge tasks, and I could create a task name called backyard. Cost code would be whatever cost code applied, and it'll get a sum total of the hours here. Uh, it'll merge these two tasks into one. Handy if you've broken your estimate down by a lot of tasks, but then you want to simplify it for time tracking. Basically, you can take all those tasks that you estimated, click a few of them, merge them together, make it simpler for your crews for time tracking. Update tasks is another tool, and it'll allow me to either change the cost code or change whether it's billable by the hour or whether I show activities for all the selected tasks. So if on a specific job you'd set it all up with the wrong cost code, it'd be pretty easy to select all the tasks, hit update, change the cost code, and hit OK, and it would update those tasks. Delete selected will delete all the selected tasks for this job, so it'll keep the job, but it will delete all the selected tasks. So if, for example, I decided I didn't want to do the, or the customer decided they didn't want to do the pergola, I could simply tick that and hit delete, and then I could delete that task from there. Help is the help button you're watching now. Save is gonna save all my changes. And of course, add a task is how I add a new task to this estimate.